Night. How many people were at the Grand Tasting last night? How many people here have watched Top Chef Masters are aware of what that is? Okay, because we're going to be making references to it and we're going to be playing with each other a little bit because I really don't like these guys that much. No matter what you think, what Andrew says, you know, he's French. Oh. No, actually, <laughs> that's not true though. I, um, he, he breaks the mold when it comes to French chefs. He's just too damn hard. I think he's a sexy, you know, you finish that. Top Chef Master Smackdown. That's what it is. That's the real deal here. I'm here to show you that even though I did not complete my corn dog moon doggy on the first uh, episode, I'm going to show you what it tastes like. I'm going to show you how to make it, and you can make it at home. And you, it's actually sort of the recipes in the book. already unplugged his fryer. Yeah, they fit. Yeah. Just before I came up here. So, so tell Ricky, don't be talking. We're going to start cooking yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need all the help I can get, that's for sure. Okay, so a moon doggy, right, is basically what I was thinking when I was on the show. You know, it was an upscale, you know, uh, comfort food, fast food type thing. And I picked a corn dog. And I'm like, I got a great idea. I'm going to make a shrimp mousse, put it on a stick, put it in a cornmeal batter and fry it. Because when I was at culinary school, they made something called shrimp, shrimp toast, which is a puree of shrimp with ginger and garlic and soy sauce and all these great things. I'm like, okay, this is what's going through my head. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk you through it. First of all, I'm going to make this uh, sanitary and safe. Anybody getting a physical? If you notice me on, <laughs> if you notice me on Top Chef Masters wearing these, it's not because I'm trying to be sanitary. It's because I'm bleeding like a stuck pig oh half the time. You know, you're like running around, and you know, I'm a spazoid, just in case. I'm, I'm an admitted spazoid. You know, you gotta, it mine, is what it is. You know? Mine turned into a water balloon full of blood at oh. one point. I don't think they show that. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. They just, they, they pick on certain people. That's yeah. the truth. Okay, this is shrimp, all right? Who doesn't like shrimp? This is what I'm thinking. I mean, 99% people don't even consider shrimp as seafood. You know, it's like, I don't eat seafood, but I do eat shrimp. It's kind of like the vegetarian who doesn't eat anything, but they'll eat bacon. Right? That's the shrimp of that. It, it enters into a whole other realm of its own. So I'm thinking, I'm going to win this with shrimp. And I might have if I had finished it, for the others of you who don't remember. So you just chop it up real easily, put it into a food processor, and I just pulled this out of the freezer just prior to the show starting up because the idea is to keep everything cold. When you're working with fish, keep it cold. And um, friction is caused when a blade or a grinding action happens, so you want to counter that. So you want everything to be ultra cool. So I have my shrimp here on ice, I'm cutting it up, pre-cutting it up a little bit so the machine doesn't have to do quite as much work. I mean, you could stick the shrimp in whole, but then you have to run it longer. I know it doesn't make sense because you're warming it up. Okay, I think you get the cold idea. Okay, the shrimp toast idea is garlic. So I'm putting in a combination of garlic and shallots, right? That's flavor, all right? So you got the protein and you got your flavor, right? A good amount of garlic and shallots. I want some heat now. I want some spice. So I've got some little Thai chili peppers. And here... Add as much or as little as you want. Personally, I like mine a little spicy, so I go for it. I jump it in. No, we're not doing that. We're not saying any funny words that begin with a B and end with an M with an A in the middle. All right, we're not doing it. We're just not about it. Okay. We're going to add some seasoning. It needs, okay, so now it's got some garlic, it's got some shallots. It needs a little, whoop, a little bit of salt. So I'm adding fish sauce. Fish sauce, Thai, Thai or Vietnamese fish sauce, is anchovies and salt that are allowed to ferment. Sounds disgusting. It is the secret ingredient to seafood. You add this and it creates this umami. Your mouth automatically starts umami. watering. So, so far, I think I'm doing right really good, go. you know. I'm like, I got the heat. I got all this working. I'm going to add a little bit of lime. I want some acid. But the flavor of lime is, is, is really in the, in the oil. So I just take a little bit of one of these little microplane jabos. It just, just kind of shaves the exterior portion that where all the oils and the flavor of the lime are. And that goes in there. Oh, eh, you know, a more. <laughs> I'm big on seasoning. All right, so that goes in there. And um, because the fish sauce is so salty, and when you go to Vietnamese restaurants, they make this thing nuk cham, and it's balanced out because the saltiness is pretty pretty strong. I put a little sugar in there. Oh. Now you don't have to put sugar in there, but it, it actually it works. When it goes on your palate, you feel this perfect balance. So if you're against sugar, don't add it. I, but it's a part of the recipe that I created on that. That certain show that we did that one time. This is an egg white. Now the egg white isn't absolutely necessary, but in when you're working on something and it's going on a stick, you want to make sure that it's got a lot of protein. Shrimp, scallops have natural amount of protein. It'll normally make a great mousse or something. It'll form, it'll hold its shape. But I add a little bit of egg white just to 
boost up the albumin in it, and so when it cooks, it holds it together better. All right, now I add the ginger. So I'm just gonna grate some ginger in there, a good amount of ginger. I want that clean, delicious, refreshing flavor of ginger. It helps to balance out the strongness, the, the, the heat that you get from the chilies. You got the salt going on, you got sweet, you pretty much got everything covered here, right? Is there something coming out here? Or? <laughs> just, just kidding. Yeah, it's sticking to the inside, you have to smack it. Right, yeah, that's for you for later. Thank you, thank you. You can have that, that's for her recipe. Now, I'm gonna add some herbs, but first of all I wanna kinda process this for a second. Hopefully this works. Yeah, it does. It's running, it's running. It smells great. Now it's gonna look a little loose in the beginning because you got the egg white, you got the shrimp uh, sauce, which is liquid. Sure. Stop. All right. And here I've got a bowl with ice under it, keeping everything cold. Rubber spatula, scrape down the sides. I'm gonna add some herbs, lots of scallions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And cilantro. <laughs> cilantro is oh, mucho shit. good. Ooh, oh. We're frying a little cilantro inadvertently, yeah. which is also good. All right, real quick, bang, boom. So you got great flavors in it: garlic, shallot, heat from some peppers, lots of albumin. You got the flavor of fresh shrimp. And we're going to start looking towards Georgia for shrimp because I don't know if we're going to be producing a lot out of the Gulf, folks. I've been talking about sustainability forever. It's time we woke up. I hope that everybody understands and embraces that. It's something I've been, that's been near and dear to me for my entire career. And I don't mean to put a bummer on anything, but I don't sleep at night anymore thinking about this stuff. All right, here's the moose. You see, oh, wow. it holds up pretty good. Add a little bit of salt to this is what I'm going to do because the fish sauce isn't, wasn't really seasoning it as highly as I wanted to. And once you add salt to a mixture that's pureed, it starts to, it starts to uh, what we call set or firm up. So I add a little salt, mix it, and in a case like this, you spread it out all around the bottom of the bowl that's, a that's, touching, that's touching the ice, and you've got, and it, 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 it super cools it. It cools it really quickly. It's almost like making ice cream, right? Like, that is, that is cold to touch. Want to touch it, Susan? Tell me yeah, what it's cold. Lie for me. It's a little, it's a little warm. Yeah, I know it's hot. It's starting to cook. No, it's good. All right. Now to form the moon doggies, we need a stick right here. Popsicle stick. I had them ready, by the way, on the show, but I wasn't quite 100%. I was covered in flour. I don't know if you remember that. Okay. So, I'm taking off this, this thing. I'm, I want my hand to be wet because this is sticky. It's tacky. So if I coat my hand with a little bit of moisture, pull up a little bit of the moon doggy mixture and start to form it. Keeping your hand wet. Come on, man. Does that not look like a corn dog? Huh? What do you think? Oh, we're totally convinced now. Yeah. Oh, and the smell of it is good. You know, and we even it's seasoned right. I just tasted it. It's got... You know, you clean up the sides. Okay, I'm going to put that right here on the side for a second while I make the, the batter. Now, the batter is real simple, and of course, I'm on Top Chef Masters, and i got to get things stuff banging it out quick. We've got 45 minutes, and of course, it goes pretty darn quick. I know that. So, I'm, I'm going to put together my little batter, if I can find a bowl. All right, and the mixture is real quite simple. What? Two parts corns, uh, cornmeal to one part biscuit. So Rick, you were on a quick fire challenge here. I think you're hitting over the yeah. 15 minutes. Oh, no. so, Andrew took I'm five minutes. You're yeah. some points here. Hurry! Uh, I'm working. I'm working. Minutes. All right. <laughs> five seconds. Yeah. All right. So this is milk, and that's a the milk is the same ratio as the cornmeal. The recipe's in my book, by the way, on page resident. <laughs> you mix this up until it has the consistency of pancake batter that's slightly thin, something you can dip in, and you have to let it. You have to let it sit. So it has the consistency of, thank you, chef. Merci beaucoup. This, all right? Here you go. You take your batter. You put your you put your mix in there. All right. You put in your fry later, and then you look at the clock, and there's five seconds left. And you know you can't serve it raw, so you curse. Because that's what I did. But the luck, the good thing is for you, is we got a, we got about 300 of them coming out of the kitchen.